watching GBTV News. Thanks, Gloria, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's World News Headlines, Obama voices support for same-sex marriage. And dozens killed in Syrian bomb blast. A U.S. missile strike kills five in Yemen. And U.S. hosts for rainy prince as monarchy vows harsher crackdown. And Greek left drops bid for coalition government. And the EU delays Greek loan pending coalition talks. And hundreds protest Bank of America in Charlotte. And DOJ to file civil rights suit against Arizona Sheriff Joe Apeo. And parents of captive U.S. soldiers reveal secret talks on prisoner swap. And NYPD stop and frisk heavily targets black and Latino men. And Vermont set to become first state to ban fracking. And U.S. sees almost 12 months on record. TV TV News would like to say the views expressed on our news broadcast do not necessarily reflect the views of NCTV Digital Media Center. But before these stories, TV TV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, TV TV News. In today's first world news story, President Obama has publicly declared his support for same-sex marriage, becoming the first U.S. president to do so. In an interview in ABC News, Obama said his stance had partially evolved through the indirect influence of his daughters, and said Malia and Sasha, it would dawn on them that somehow their friends' parents would be treated differently, it doesn't make sense to them, and frankly, that's the kind of thing that prompts a change of perspective. Obama chose to address the issue days after Vice President Joe Biden declared his support for same-sex marriage, which had set off new calls for Obama to clarify his stance. Despite offering his personal endorsement, Obama said he still believes same-sex marriage is an issue of state rights to be decided by states, not by the federal government. Just this week, voters in North Carolina passed a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage, while in Colorado, Republicans blocked same-sex civil unions bill in the state house, prompting Governor John Hickenlooper to convene a special session on Friday. And dozens of people have been killed and more than 100 wounded in a pair of bombings in the Syrian capital of Damascus. One of the blasts struck near the headquarters of Syria's intelligence services. It was one of the deadliest attacks to hit the regime of Syrian President Bashir al-Assad in 14 months since the anti-government uprising began. At least five people have been killed in an apparent U.S. military missile attack in the south of Yemen. Yemeni officials said the victims were militants in the al-Qaeda stronghold of Jar. The Pentagon, meanwhile, has confirmed it is sending military trainers and special operation forces back to Yemen to work with Yemen's military. Earlier this week, it was revealed that CIA thwarted a bomb plot originally originating in Yemen with the help of a Saudi informant acting as a double agent. The Obama administration is hosting Bahraini Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalafi in Washington as the Bahraini regime is vowing a harsher crackdown on anti-government protesters. Peering with al Khalafi at the State Department, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton failed to directly mention the repression of protests, referring only to Bahrain's internal issues. She said, Bahrain is a value ally of the United States. We partner with many important issues and mutual concern to each of our nations and to be regional and global concerns as well. I'm looking forward to a chance to talk over His Royal Highness a number of issues, both internally and externally, that Bahrain is dealing with to have some better understanding of the ongoing efforts of the government of Bahrain is undertaking. So again, Your Royal Highness, welcome to the United States. 
Clinton's comments come one day after Bahraini government vowed to escalate its crackdown on anti-government demonstrators. Speaking in Reuters, a Bahraini government spokesman said, we are looking into the per perpetrators and people who use print, broadcast, and social media to encourage illegal protests and violence around the country. If applying the law means tougher action, then so be it. Warning comes days after the arrest of a prominent Bahraini human rights activist, Nabil Rajib, Rajab, in a statement, Amnesty International declared Rajab a prisoner of conscience and called for his immediate release. Another prominent activist, Abdullah Hadi al Khawaji, was been in a hunger strike for three months, protesting his life imprisonment. Bahrain is a key U.S. government ally, hosting the Navy's Fifth Fleet. And Greece's main leftist party has dropped its efforts to form a coalition government after failing to convince rival parties to oppose austerity measures demanded by international lenders. Alexis Tespra of the Coalition of Radical Left had launched a coalition effort after a strong showing in weekend elections. But on Wednesday, Tespiris was no agreement is possible, he said, to the politicians in the bailout terms. Either they're wrong policies, just like a bailout, which we continue in larger or smaller doses, or it will lead us down a, towards catastrophe, or we will demand another solution beyond these mistaken cat catastrophic policies. Greeks' Socialist Party, which supports the austerity package, will now attempt to form a coalition. If no party can pull it off, another round of elections could be held next month. And the European Union has delayed a major loan to the Greeks pending the outcome of the coalition government talks. The EU says it will proceed with a $5.4 billion loan today, but will delay the disbursement of over $1.2 billion until next Monday, or well, today. The Brussels EU Commission President Jose Barroso said there is an agreement between Greece and a Euro area, all the Euro area member states and European institutions. Greece has to respect this agreement as the other countries have to respect this agreement. It's a question of credibility, not only for Greece, but for the Euro area as a whole. And this is very important to understand, and this agreement is not respected. It will be very negative for Greece. And hundreds of people marched in Charlotte, North Carolina, and went on Wednesday with a rally outside the annual shareholders meeting of the financial giant, Bank of America. Demonstrators from a number of groups gathered to protest Bank of America's support for coal industry as well as its records on foreclosures. Todd Zimmer of the Rainforest Action Network said Bank of America's funding the coal industry has harmed cities like Charlotte. It said, I'm here because the price that we pay in Bank of America's profit from coal funding is too high. So in this community, one in four Charlotte kids will develop respiratory disease or asthma as a result of Bank of America's coal funding. And not only that, but Bank of America funding for coal is putting the entire future of our planet at risk because it drives runaway climate change. We should not have to bear these burdens and face these perils so that Bank of America can make a profit. The Justice Department has confirmed plans to sue Arizona Sheriff Joe Apeo for civil rights violations, including a racial profiling of Hispanics. DOJ probe late last year accused Apeo of targeting Hispanic residents, illegally detaining them, and then denying them basic rights behind bars. Settlement talks between Arpeo and the federal officials broke down last month over Arpeo's resistance to allowing an independent monitor of his department. Wednesday, the DOJ said it had provided Arpeo with a notice of intent to file civil action. Arpeo says he will fight the suit. And the parent of a U.S. soldier held captive in Afghanistan for nearly three years has revealed their son has been a subject of talks for prisoner swaps with the Taliban. 26-year-old Bowie Berg Dahi has been held by the Taliban since going missing in June 2009. His parents now say the United States had come close to reaching a deal to free five Guantanamo Bay prisoners in exchange for Berg, Berg Dahi's release. The Bergdahi family says they are now speaking out publicly to help pressure the White House to win their son's return. A new analyst of the New York City Police Department's controversial stop and frisk program showed police have overwhelmingly targeted young black and Latino men. The New York Civil Liberties Union found about 87 percent of people who were stopped by police last year were black or Latino. While young black and Latino males between the age of 14 and 24 make up less than 5% of the city's population, they constitute nearly 42% of the stops last year. NYCLU also found the program was largely ineffective at recovering illegal firearms of those risk frisked by police. Less than 2% were found to have a weapon. Nine out of 10 people stopped were neither arrested or ticketed. The report analyzed, analyzed electronic data initially concealed by the NYPD the stop and frisk program has 
drawn widespread protests for targeting young people of color. And Vermont is poised to become the first U.S. state to ban the natural gas drilling practice of hydraulic fracturing or fracking. The Vermont legislature has sent a measure imposing the ban to Governor Peter Shumlin, who is expected to sign it into law. A new climate data shows the period from May 2011 into April 2012 was the warmest ever recorded in the United States. Average temperature over the 12-month stretch was nearly 3 degrees Fahrenheit above last century's average. In recent months, the United States has seen several notable signs of climate change, including the warmest March on record. And that's it for our World News today. Now we'd like to thank another one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. That's right, it's time for the police blotter and the pictures in the blotter, now from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. Grass Valley Police Department on Tuesday, 8.20 a.m. A caller from Upper Slate Creek Road reported a man driving a Mustang extremely fast. At 8.52 a.m., a caller from 400 Block of Mill Street reported a man grabbed a woman by the head. She said he had pulled her hood and it was okay. At 10.11 a.m., a caller from 100 Block of West Main Street reported finding drug paraphernalia. At 12.24 p.m., a caller from West McKnight Way reported a dispute over a vehicle accident. A person was cited on suspicion of vandalism. At 12.51 p.m., a man from 400 Block of South Auburn Street reported a woman was having a panic attack. She was gone when deputies arrived. At 2.52 p.m., a man from 100 Block of Baden Avenue reported the theft of laptops. At 4.18 p.m., a caller from South Auburn Street reported a man beating up a vehicle that had a woman inside and yelling. It was found to be a verbal dispute only. At 4.38 p.m., a caller from 200 Block of South Auburn Street reported a man climbing over a fence. At 7.55 p.m., a caller from Glenwood Road reported a woman possibly under the influence slurring her words and driving up and down the road. She was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence. On Wednesday, 12.45 a.m., a caller from 300 Block of Pleasant Street reported loud yelling and swearing. The person agreed to keep it down. At 1.55 a.m., a caller from Brunswick Road reported vandalism to a taxi. No permanent damage was found. Several had fled, but the one person would pay. At 1.56 a.m., a caller from 11,000 block of East Main Street reported a store had been broken into. At Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Tuesday at 10.31 a.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Banner Lava Cap Road reported a burglary. At 10.44 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Pleasant Valley Road reported a shoplifter. At 10.46 a.m., a woman from Penn Valley Drive reported a neighbor possible had been following children. At 11.19 a.m., a caller from Ridge Road reported possession of marijuana. At 11.55 a.m., a caller from Gold Hill Drive reported a vehicle tire had been stabbed. At 12.56 p.m., a man from 12,000 block of Killham Mine Road reported a man had called and told him to send money to help his grandson. He sent $1,800, and now the person was calling again. At 12.58 p.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Talking Pines Road reported a possible residential burglary. At 1.01 p.m., a caller from 12,000 block of Loma Rica Drive reported finding a broken window on a vehicle. And at 4.44 p.m., a man from 11,000 block of Red Dog Road reported theft of documents from his room. At 5.23 p.m., a caller from McCourtney Road and Clear Creek Place reported road rage. 
and 5.42 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Wilson Road reported a residential burglary. And 7.24 p.m., a caller from Owl Road reported a boy kicked a hole in a door. And 7.44 p.m., a man from Torrey Pines Drive reported a 15-year-old daughter was given pot brownies by her boyfriend who got them from his parents. And 7.45 p.m., a man from 18,000 block of North Cherry Creek Road reported a rock was thrown at his vehicle on Highway 49. And 8.39 p.m., a man from Gracie Road requested extra patrols for drug sales and prostitution. And 8.42 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Sand Piper Way reported the theft of jewelry in Nevada City Police Department on Tuesday, 8.51 a.m. A caller from 300 block of Broad Street reported a possible attempted burglary. And 5.47 p.m., a caller from Hoover Lane reported a child fell from a tree. And that's it for the police blotter today. Now we'd like to thank another one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and catering for parties, get togethers, weddings, or whatever. Open seven days a week. In local news headlines, GVPD confirmed identity of woman found dead at Memorial Park. The jury finds Hauser guilty of meth sales, and GV man arrested with 32 pounds of pot, and donations, large and small, saving parks. In today's first local story, written by Matthew Renda of the Union, a woman whose body was found Thursday morning in Memorial Park has been identified as Leon Suffield, 49, or Leanne. Officers from Grass Valley Police Department found Suffield who was unclothed near the garbage dumpster in general parking area in the park at 7 a.m., said Captain Rex Marks of the GVPD. It is unclear how the woman arrived at the park, Marks added. Members of the California Department of Justice and investigators of the Nevada County District Attorney's Office are assisting GVPD with a forensic investigation. There is no indication of other parties, Mark said. We don't know how the body arrived and if anybody has any information or was near the park last night or in the early morning, please get in contact with us. Anyone with any information regarding the crime should call 530-477-4600. In a story written by Liz Keller of the Union, Ronald Hauser's defense attorney told a jury Wednesday afternoon that law enforcement had made several speculative leaps in their efforts to paint her client's personal stash of meth and cash as evidence that he was selling drugs. But the juror chose to believe the testimony presented by several members of the Nevada County Sheriff's Narcotics Task Force coming back quickly with a guilty verdict on all counts. Hauser was found guilty of resisting arrest, transportation of meth, and possession of meth for sale with an included lesser charge of simple possession. A member of the task force had pulled Hauser over on May 13, 2010. In Grass Valley, Hauser was handcuffed after a lengthy struggle, the deputy testified. According to the deputy, Hauser had three baggies stashed in camera case attached to his belt. One contained 0.98 grams of suspected meth. Second contained 12.22 grams of suspected meth. He had a cash in his pants pocket. Several box cutters were found next to the pickup. Two buck knives were found in the glove box. Digital scale without any batteries was found on the floorboards. Hauser told deputies the meth was for his own use and that he eats it. He also told them the cash was payment for construction work. Earlier in the day, Common Goals program manager Fred Jefferson testified that he had assessed Hauser and that Hauser had admitted to a 33-year history of meth use. He called Hauser old school, adding the oral ingestion of meth was not inconsistent with Hauser's history. He also disputed earlier testimony from law enforcement that a half ounce of meth was too large a quantity for personal use, telling the jury that meth users could absolutely buy more meth than they could use in one day. On the face of it, he could be dealing, Jefferson said, but I came away feeling this was for personal use. In her closing arguments, Jennifer Granger, 
said that the plausible explanation for each piece of evidence used by prosecutor Jim Phillips to prove his case, but the jury evidently found the prosecution argument more compelling. Sheriff Sergeant Bill Smethers, who was the head of the narcotics task force at the time of the arrest, testified Tuesday the amount of meth and a large sum of cash and the lack of drug paraphernalia all were proof of intent to sell. According to Phillips, testimony will be heard on potential enhancements to Hauser's sentence. Last year, Hauser was found guilty in Nevada County Superior Court of possession of a deadly weapon, as well as being a felon in possession of a firearm and ammunition. He's not yet been sentenced on that case. He also has two prior strike felony convictions stemming from armed robberies in Contra Costa County. A Grass Valley man was arrested on multiple charges Monday after California Highway Patrol officers allegedly found 32 pounds of marijuana in his vehicle. Christopher Joel Argento, 21, allegedly was driving a Dodge Ram pickup in a parking lot at Highway 49 and Colby Road at about 8.30 p.m. when he hit the curb and drove onto a planter, according to CHP report. A CHP officer spotted the accident and went to investigate. Argento seemed intoxicated and was found to be under the influence of drugs, according to the report. A search of his vehicle allegedly uncovered about 32 pounds of packaged marijuana. He was booked into county jail on suspicion of transporting marijuana, possession of marijuana for sale, driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs, and violating probation. He was being held in lieu of $12,154 bail. With more need than ever to support local state parks, folks in the foothills and mountain towns of the Sierra Nevada are doing what their part to donate what they can to the Olmstead Park Fund. On the San Juan Ridge, close to $1,500 was collected in donations at Mother Trucker's Grocery Store. In Truckee and Tahoe City, buckets of New Moon Natural Foods have filled with close to $1,000 in donations. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Mother Trucker's Grocery Store and New Moon Natural Foods for their support of saving our state parks when many larger organizations had yet to step forward. Businesses like Mother Trucker's and New Moon were completely supportive and willing to help my efforts further solidifying their concerns for the local community. And this is uh, written by Alden Olmstead. Dave, Davey Hines, bookkeeper of the New Moon Natural Foods, decided to host a donation bucket a few months ago after catching the tail end of my interview with broadcaster Sherry Schnook, KVMR FM Radio. I was struck by the idea that if everyone in California gave just one dollar, we could save the state parks from closure. She donated a small amount through my website and later hosted a bucket at the Two New Moon Natural Food location. This is truly a grassroots movement, and I'm so happy to be able to help out in any way that I can. It is inspiring to see Alden's idea have so much impact and to see success start to happen. Last month, the California Department of Parks and Recreation agreed to keep Jug Handel State Natural Reserve open one more year thanks to combined contributions of $19,000 from the Olmstead Park Fund and California State Park Foundation. Carrying on the spirit of my father, the late naturalist John D. Olmstead, I established the Olmstead Park Fund to respond to a closure list of 70 state parks since I began bucket campaign last summer in various locations throughout the state. Supporters have contributed contributed thirty thousand to help keep the state parks open. To learn more about the Olmstead Park Fund, visit OlmsteadParkFund.org. Alden Olmstead is executive director of the Olmstead Park Fund. And that's it for local news today. Now we'd like to thank the union, Amy Goodman, Reuters, and Associated Press, and Jocko for not shutting up in the background, and others for the sourcing of our news and you for watching. You can watch this broadcast on Comcast Cable and CTV Channel 11 in Nevada County, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, Southern Link 16 in Truckee and Alta Sierra. We also are streamed on the Internet and CTV's Digital Media Center website at nevadacountytv.org and gvtv.org. And don't forget Grass Valley Television that plays 24-7 on the net, grassvalleytelevision.com. We post to Facebook, YouTube, Blip.tv, and many other podcast sites and other types of sites and have RSS feed and video podcast on iTunes. Just search under Video Podcast for GVTV News. Content is controlled by the producer of this newscast, me, and Grass Valley Television is not necessarily the opinion of NCTV Digital Media Center. Grass Valley Television also videotapes local events around Nevada County, and if you have a need for video, you can contact us for more info, grassvalleytelevision, gmail.com. 530-362-8889. This show produced by Grass Valley Television of Rural Counties Television Network. 
And yes, I know you what you're saying. And Sharina Canoke will be anchoring tomorrow. It'll be Tuesdays and Thursdays again where she's back on board, hopefully, this week. We hope you will keep tuned to our new season. And we're going to spice up the news in the future. Please email us with ideas and comments. We'd like to hear from you. And like us on Facebook if you can. The news player can be on your site and you all and you can get a, a fresh news update daily. Just use the embed code on YouTube or blip the TV site. Talk to you tomorrow. It should be Tuesday. <laughs>